Hey everyone, welcome back to another book preview video. In last week's video, we took a look at this one here. I really enjoyed this one actually. And this week, as mentioned, we're going to take a look at this one. So this is Mastering Fantasy Art, Drawing Dynamic Characters, People, Poses, Creatures and More. And this is by, I believe, John Stanko, I think he's called. Let's take a look at the back. Apologies if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. So this is published by the same company as that other book. Definitely take a look at that in the description box below. I'll put a link to that if you missed that one. And straight away with this one, you'll notice that some of the illustrations in the very beginning are really good, to put it bluntly. Which is always a really good sign. And I'm going to leave it here for a couple of seconds so that you can pause the video if you want to take a look through the contents. Okay, so let's move on. Again, some really cool illustrations right off the bat there. So, like most art books, it's going to have an introduction, probably going to have its materials and things. Let's take a look. But one of the reasons I love this book, this is probably one of my favourite art books, is the emphasis on using reference. And not just using reference, but how to use reference. I don't think many books actually go into this. I mean, you saw on that page there, he was actually talking about good versus bad reference. I know on another page he talks about good lighting versus bad lighting. Um, you can see there, I assume that he probably, you know, photographs his own reference and shows you throughout. Talks a little bit there about working with a model. And then once you're through that bit, part two is actually the demonstrations. And what I mean by that is once he's shown you how to get good reference, he shows you how to then build on that reference so that you're not just copying it, but you're actually developing it further. So yeah, you're using it as reference as opposed to copying it. So a bit like the last book, it's sort of split down into what I'm going to call projects. So Barbarian again here. Classic fantasy projects, I would call them, which is right up my street. I really like this one, how he's developed the character here. You're probably going to hear me say that a lot throughout. As well as that, I really like realistic styles and I even like black and white. So to me, this almost like a sketch, but a, a finished rendered sketch, I think is really good. So let's take a look at the Druid. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce him. So this is the reference photo. He gives you a little bit about the pose and the story behind it to actually create the illustration. And then if we skip through a little bit, that finished illustration. Yeah, if you see the reference, you know where it's come from, but it is, it's really good, in my opinion, at least. This one made me laugh a little bit at first, this pose. But you will see in a second, he actually manages to pull it off and create something really awesome. Uh, I wasn't reading it, but I'm guessing it's some sort of mage or warlock or something like that. So he's using a, a guy here sat on a chair and it says dwarf. The process he's using is a pretty good way for artists to learn, sketching the basic postures and fleshing it out, then I guess getting the proportions and building on that. I remember when I read through this the first time, this was one of my favourite ones just because of how much it actually changes from the reference photo. I just thought this was so cool. If you're not really bothered about fantasy art, maybe this one isn't going to be the book for you. That being said, it's still got some really interesting tips and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, for me it's almost invaluable because it actually teaches you how to use reference and I think that's something that not many books do and it could probably help people progress a lot quicker by reading this book. What I was saying earlier as well is that I really like the finished style on these. Compared to last week's book that we looked at, the Warriors and Heroes book, this one to me is probably, well I actually prefer this one by quite a lot, but part of that is due to the style. Um, the other book went into colour theory and he actually coloured all of his. So I know a lot of you guys or a lot of people in general prefer coloured images, fully finished, rendered images. Not that these ones aren't finished, but you know what I mean. Um, so some people might prefer that one. To me personally, I quite often prefer art when it's not coloured. Sometimes I end up thinking it spoils it unless it's done really well. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but... You might have seen there that he touches on weapons in this one and also creating, in this case, I think it was a wizard's tower. And I thought that was really cool. 
So we're moving on more to creatures now from the looks of things, starting with a dragon. Classic fantasy book. But there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. So we're looking at unicorns uh, using animal reference as well. That's pretty cool. The length of the book I think is very similar to last week's, which is about 130 pages. And as long as you like fantasy art and you want to improve your artwork, I think there's going to be something in this book for you. You might hear me say this in a lot of my book preview videos, but it's quite inspiring. Now, everyone's got personal preference to that, of course, but hopefully you can judge from this book whether this is going to be worthwhile for you to get. So again, he's using the same process. He's got a story and poses. He's created or he's got his reference and put it how he wants. That's almost like his starting point from the looks of things. This is one I haven't actually read all the way through in detail because I've got that many books and not enough time. But I think I'm going to prioritise this one because it's just, honestly, I think it's really amazing, this book, um, from the looks of it quickly like this. And it showcases the artwork of the artist as well, which is always really nice. So yeah, out of all of my book reviews, I would actually say this is one that I would probably recommend more than others. Yeah, probably. And we're going to leave it at that. I actually have this book as well. Um, so I'll put a link to that as well below for those that are interested. A little plug there. So there we have it. If you watched last week's video, let me know which of these books that you preferred the look of. I have to say, I'm really impressed with both of these ones. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, everyone.